Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I'm looking at Incredible Hulk number 352. Thanks for joining me again today for the next part of the Peter David Hulk run. Last time we left off, he was in Jarella's world explaining how he survived the Gamma Bomb explosion in the Countdown series that wrapped up the McFarlane run. But before I dive into that, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the viewers' support. Every like, comment, and subscription is appreciated. If you're enjoying positive comic content, please consider hitting thumbs up. Comments are always encouraged, and if you haven't already, why not subscribe so you never miss out on any future videos? I created this channel to entertain, inform, and maybe even inspire you to read some comics. If you think that's a good message and other comic fans need it in their feed, your likes, shares, subs, tell the YouTube algorithm to put it in front of them. Let's get back into this. Right off the bat, I'm going to point out a coloring mistake on this cover. This guy is supposed to be green. I don't know why they colored him, you know, white dude flesh, but eh, they messed up there. I don't love this cover as much as the last issue. I think the last issue of one of, was one of Purvis's best. This one is, I mean, it's okay, but I mean, you've got this, the Hulk just beating up on this kind of average sized guy here. And the fact that they didn't color him correctly, I mean, he just looks like a white dude with a, you know, blaster helmet, like he's using the force or something silly. So, don't love this cover. Hulk is dressed like a Roman, that kind of, you know, some interesting aspect going there, but not a favorite cover. Still a good issue, though, because I do love the Jarella's world. If you watched my last video, you would see how I explained that the editor's note led me to be a comic hunter. It had me going after issues of Jarella's world. So that's why I, I have a strong nostalgic feel for this storyline, even if I don't love that cover very much. <laughs> we have to start out in Las Vegas, because that's where the Hulk has been, but he's he's fallen asleep and he's dreaming. That's what you're getting here. Marla's trying to call him, leaving a message. She, I guess she's angry that she hasn't heard from him in a few days. And... That, that's just kind of to establish that we are having a flashback issue and not, you know, it's not happening in the in the present. Seemingly. Great opening splash, I would say, though. We've got our Jeff Purvis lettering here. Peter David, the writer, Jeff Purvis, penciler. Terry Austin's back for inking. He did the 350 issue with The Thing and Doom. I think he does a good job of helping bring Purvis's pencils out. The first couple of inkers he had on the run would do it a little too thin, I think, and some of the features would get lost, particularly on faces. Our colorist is still Petra Scotis, who I haven't been loving on this series really at all. He tends to have like a washed out look and I find coloring mistakes all the time. I don't know that he colored this cover. I don't, he probably didn't color the cover because I think he would have gotten the, the skin color right. Plus, the Hulk is also wearing the wrong colors that he wears on the inside of this. But like I was saying, nice opening shot. Uh, Purvis is doing this medieval setting really well. Good backgrounds in this. This guy, the Grand Inquisitor, he's positioned himself as sort of a prophet of the Hulk. And there's a, been a big religion around the Hulk and Jarella that's formed in the in this time. And... Really, he's just kind of positioned himself to be the leader of everything. You have him whipping up the masses into hearing the tales of, of the Hulk returning, but he's the Grey Hulk, so he's calling him the Anti-Hulk. He doesn't really care if it's the real Hulk or not. He just wants the masses to reject it because he wants to maintain his power. So as you, you know, you see the, the crowd kind of getting whipped up into a frenzy. You got one guy here. What a load of Warthos chips. And he gets tapped on the shoulder. He's like, how was I thinking seditious thoughts? Which was, was kind of funny for him to say that out loud. But then it explains here that I guess he feels like the Inquisitor's men can almost read thoughts recently. These guys, this is, this is setting up something interesting that doesn't really go anywhere. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed in this scene. I mean, great backgrounds by Purvis. You know, interesting little, like, rebellion going on here in the background, but it's it doesn't, it doesn't pay off for anything. Cut back to the Hulk. Hulk is with this guy, Gorsham. 
And Gorsham, ha- he's the one that brought the Hulk here. He's brought the Hulk to Jarella's world to assert the Grand Inquisitor, but he's setting it up like, you know, the Grand Inquisitor is bad. We're the good guys. We want to honor you and worship and worship the Hulk. And, you know, we we know that you're not really a god, but you are a leader. And, you know, they're, they're gassing up the Hulk here. He doesn't really want it. He just wants Banner gone. Hulk is making fun of the clothes they put him in, this, like, Roman-esque garb. Um, but you see it's blue here on the cover as white, so just another coloring mistake on the cover. Great background setup scenery again right there. So they're telling him, like, you know, people will bow down and worship you, and the Hulk's like, I don't really want to be worshipped. I just want Banner gone. And he's saying, do you hear him in your head? And he's like, no. And he's always there buzzing in the back of my mind but it better stay that way it will i swear it so the hulk's on board for this little rebellion against the grand inquisitor but he, at this point he's saying like i'm just gonna help you out if you're gonna make it so banner's gone for good and then send me back i want to get back to my world because i really want to go kill the leader basically good facial expressions here they're gonna roll him through town they're gonna try to go and like just amass more support. So they're going through some of the other smaller villages to recruit people to just be in the following and to acknowledge the Hulk as as the true Hulk and not this anti-Hulk that the Inquisitor is trying to get them to believe. Some cool creatures here, these like Cyclops-looking creatures that they're riding. They're almost like Cyclops dewbacks from Star Wars. You get this scene here where this one guy from the Inquisitor, he knocks over somebody's fruit stand, these, like, peasants in the village. Uh, They have a blonde daughter, and, you know, he's like, oh, you look like you have a calling to be one of the sister sisters of Jarella. Um, I'll I'll conduct the interview with you, and, you know, basically he's just saying, I'm going to take your daughter. And they feel powerless initially to do anything about it, so... Even though the daughter's like, please help me, mother, father, that I can oh, do as you say, it's an, an honor. And then he's coming. And they march the Hulk into town. A good look at the Cyclops creature there. It's almost like smiling. Looks like something out of like a, like a Jim Henson production. So the Hulk comes in and he, he stops the guy. Not really for that reason, but like he just comes in and the Inquisitor's soldiers. He's like, who are these morons? I believe you would call them cannon fodder. Thought so. And so he goes about just, you know, boom. We get our good Jeff Purvis lettering here. Our clink with a K. I mean, I'm sorry. Our clink with a Q. I mean, I'm just, I'm really impressed by the backgrounds. It makes you want to see Jeff Purvis do a fantasy series of some sort. He would have been great on, you know, Conan. Um, So the Hulk goes about You know, just kicking some butt. Not much of anything (laughs) giving him any kind of challenge here. And the people, they shoot some arrows at him that they say have been blessed by the Inquisitor himself. And, of course, they just bounce right off the Hulk. I guess it looks like it's stuck in him, but it must have stuck in his shirt. It says Vit as if it, like, hit. And it's, like, kind of rattling, but, yeah, I mean, the arrow's stuck in him, so... So in this, like, the Hulk, you know, kind of just generally hitting and smashing, the guy that was going to take the other people's daughter, he, his leg is smashed, and he's saying, uh, citizens, help me, that's an order. And they turn on him quick. They're like, nope, there's the real Hulk. Uh, you just tried to take our daughter. Whack. I know if you'll be... And he's like, fools, you'll all die for this. And then covered up by the cart that he pushed over, the whole family just, I guess, beats him to death. You know, this is not the same Jarella's world that was so great initially. So as they're leaving and the Hulk wonders uh, what the Grand Inquisitor will say about that. He did what? And then we cut back to the main castle area, I guess, where the Inquisitor is. And here's our little rebellion group again. The girl that was killed in the previous issue, it turned out that she wasn't dead and they were able to rescue her. And they're asking her, she's like, it is the Hulk and the Hulk is really coming and all of a sudden, the Inquisitor's men break in and capture him. And 
that's it. And that's pretty much it. They have him over here being tortured, but it's like these guys have played no role. They played no role really in the last issue. They aren't really playing much of a role like the Hulk doesn't even really encounter him in this issue. So I don't really know what the point of the this was to move the story. Off. So they get wind that the Hulk, I guess, is in the throne room. This was a weird transition altogether, actually. Or maybe they were coming to this town, the Hulk, this part of the village or whatever, and the, the Inquisitor's men were coming to take down the Hulk, and they get in there and the throne room is empty with just that cape on it, and there's a rumble, and a grumble, and the Hulk comes up from the ground. And this is like the third time we've seen the Hulk do this in the past, I don't know, 15 issues or so that he likes to tunnel underground and come back up. And, you know, I'm, I'm rereading this, and I kind of laughed about that because now I'm binge reading it instead of months in between the issues, and I'm laughing that Peter David keeps reusing the same technique. But even Peter David's aware that he's doing it because he's like, always remember, Gold Gorsham, when you want to impress him, tunnel under him and rip out the ground. I'll remember, Holy One. It is something that the Hulk is just enjoying doing. He's he's figured out something here that, like, whenever I do this, it always throws off the opponent that he came up out of the ground. It's, it's not just Peter David being repetitive. It's also, like, a fighting style that the Hulk is, has figured out. Good torture room here by Purvis. I mean, you know, it's torturing more people, but why are we getting to know these people when they serve no purpose? In fact, this guy's going to get stabbed right here. I love this lettering. I love that it's like three-dimensional, and it's even shaded to come around from... And they're like, what was that? And of course, it's the Hulk. Thunderclap, nice lettering going there, too. And now the Hulk's just basically going to take out the Inquisitor. He jumps up, and first he gets zapped. The Inquisitor has these, like, rod things, some kind of electrical power he can use. He's stolen a little bit of the science machinery that was left over from the Cyclop, from the original Jorella stories, and that's kind of what he's using. So he knocks the, he knocks the Hulk back, and the person's like, let us help you with his magic. I don't need any help. So he jumps up. And at first it looks like he's just going to land right there, but no, he's going even higher. Like, he's gone, he's running away. No, he's coming back down like a missile. So he tunneled underground, and now he's coming down from the top. Takes the whole thing out, he makes a joke about, oh, I took the whole building out, I just don't make them like they used to. I really like this panel too, I like the way the Hulk looks right there. He's Purvis does do kind of a smaller Hulk, I mean he's bulky, but he's smaller, because even in this like the way the Inquisitor's body is right here. If they were standing next to each other, the Hulk wouldn't be too much taller. Another great lettering there. I like this. I even like this, where he lands, and you've got your, your you know, swoosh action opening here, but these, like, little breaks in it. It's just like a little touch of something to add a little bit more dynamic visual stimulation. Struggle to come up with good words there. To add a little bit more visualization to his his move, his move bleh. to add a little bit more visualization to his move books. <laughs> so his helmet's off, and you see, I guess he's blind, but he must have been using this helmet, which was connected to his head. They don't really do a great job of explaining that stuff to it. Not that it really needs it per se, but it, I mean, it's kind of kind of gruesome. It's kind of gross in a way when he pulls it off and smashes those little Tesla coils, whatever he has going on here. And he's going to he's gonna finish him off, but then they request, they're like, don't finish him off. Who says it here? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> this guy that's trouble me. Uh, Please, oh blessed Hulk, don't hurt him. Don't Leave him to us. And the Hulk's like, fine, you can do what you want. So they take him out, medieval torture him in the public square, and he eventually recants, says it's the real Hulk, and everybody's happy, right? Um, I mean, Purvis does a good job of the details on all these, like, the stonework and stuff. You can tell Purvis really enjoyed doing this issue, or these two issues. So then we go back, and 
they're talking about like, okay, we'll send you home. We found something the same mass and size to, in a, the place you call Washington, D.C. Um, we're going to send you back. And the Hulk is like, I'm not leaving. I actually like it here. I could probably get used to this worship thing. And even though Banner's not here right now, what if he does come back? I'll need your help getting rid of him again. Um, and I, I like all these things. And they're like, no, we're sending you back. They're like, you stinking. You just wanted to be in, be head honcho. Of course, you gray idiot. I'll rule our people now, and I don't need you around cluttering things up. I'll, I'll, you'll nothing. The spell to return you is already in effect. And so they, what they bring in is the statue of the Hulk from the early 200 issues when, well, I guess it was like mid-200 issues where Banner Banner had taken control of the Hulk's body. It wasn't like Merge Hulk. It was straight up Banner and the Hulk's body. And because of that, he was a little weaker and because um, he wouldn't let himself get like enraged enough. But he got pardoned and they built a statue of him out of adamantium, it says. And so that's what they replaced him with. And then you get this, you know, there's good news and bad news. The good news is, or what does it say? The bad news was the return spell went awry, banging up the Hulk pretty good before bump, dropping him unceremoniously in the Yucca Flats instead of Washington, D.C. The good news is it led to his first encounter with Baron Getty and his subsequent life as Mr. Fix-It. More good and bad news? Okay, bad news for the Hulk is Banner just returned. The good news is we're to be continued. So now Banner's back. So we haven't had Banner since issue 345. I guess he was at 345 a little bit. And that was the last time we saw Banner. So welcome back, Bruce Banner. We'll see you next issue. I love this Christmas ad. Always love that Christmas ad. <laughs> and uh, until next time, read your comments. Thank you.